Welcome to this project setup video for Info Software. In this video, we want to go into detail about coordinate system setup. In this video, we want to explain the different functionalities and in US Master and in Trimble Photogrammetry, we will have very similar setups and functionalities. Therefore, this video can also be used for Trimble Photogrammetry. For this video, we will use the US Master demo data for Training Data US, which is an area mapping project. So we open a new project here, and then we see following windows coming up. We see at the beginning the basics window, which let you know that uh, at present there is a a free local coordinate system defined, the so-called LSR system. Um, you can use this system if all data you want to import into your project are in the same projected system. We recommend that you define a system although um, your data may be are coming in the same system because later on you can see then also in your report file this defined system. We can confirm the window and therefore we will now define our specific coordinate system by selecting in the basics window here instead of local the other button. Then when we select other you can now here select these three dot button which allows us to select different coordinate systems. But before we go into this we want to give some general information about coordinate systems. First of all we want to give you some general information. It is important that you know that we are working in a projected coordinate system. That means you have a projection on a given ellipsoid. You cannot select here a geocentrical system, which means a lat long altitude system. This is not possible. During the definition of the coordinate system, you have the possibility to adapt different height levels. Let me say in this way, if you maybe have uh, GNSS positions in lat long altitude and you have ground control points in a projected system, then the height definition is not the same. The lat long data will have an ellipsoidal height and the ground control points having a automatic height. You can adapt the two height levels by um, assigning a geoid. There are different geoids available depending on the region you have your project flown. If you make no adaption or you make no assignment of a geoid, you will have a set shift later on in your project. Okay, to make it maybe a little bit um, easier to understand what we mean. So assume that you have um, ground control points and um, they have an orthometric height. You see, the orthometric height are depending on the terrain, the green line. Then you have um, a let long altitude coordinates from your GNSS position and they are given with the ellipsoidal height here corresponding to the orange line here. That we can adapt the height difference we need the geoid. So the geoid will make then this that it makes a correction of the ellipsoidal height using the geoid information and then you will, this will result in an orthometric height. So all these things will be done during import. That means the lat long coordinate will be transformed into your, pro, uh, into your project coordinate system and the height will be calculated from an ellipsoidal to an 
asymmetric height. So you will have, let me say, identical systems or identical coordinates for the GNSS and the ground control point. point. I mean the system, the coordinates will not be the same, sure. Yeah? Okay. So let's start with our data. We have data which is flown in Belgium. So when we go here to our selection, then we will see that we have here three different tabulators, projected systems, local systems, geographic systems. And our data comes from the WGS84 in UTM31 North. The GNSS data is stored in latitude and longitude, which is a geocentric coordinate system or a geographic coordinate system. The GNSS data is based therefore on an ellipsoidal height, different as our target coordinate system where we want to have orthometric heights in our UTM 31 North. Therefore, we will need to correct this and we need to assign a geoid to our coordinate system. And this is done on the geographic systems tab where we will now select the WGS84 geoid or datum. So here we see the WGS84 datum. When we take a closer look to the WGS84 at the parameters, we see at the moment there is no geoid to the standardized WGS84 system assigned. The original WGS84 is not possible to be edited. There are standardizations, so this WGS84 is stored as an EPSG code 4326 and should also be not changed. To do this, we will make a copy from this WGS84 datum by selecting here copy and then we can now work on the user-defined datum. You can easily find user-defined systems here by selecting show only user-defined one and then we see here uh, a copy from the WGS84. I did already before a copy when I did some test runs so I will just remove the previous one and we can select this one here and go into edit mode. Now we make the following settings in the copy of our original system. So first of all you can enter a name that maybe you can identify it easily also maybe later for another project. Then um, you can see that there is also the possibility to enter seven transformation parameters. The meaning is the following. If you would now uh, change from one ellipsoid like the WGS84 to another ellipsoid, um, let me say um, the Bessel ellipsoid in Germany, which has another definition, then you have to enter here a transformation, also the seven transformation parameters to or from WGS84. In our case, we are um, don't want to change the ellipsoid. We stay on WGS84. We only want to adapt a geoid. Therefore, we enter zero for all parameters because we do not want to have any change. Now we want to employ our geoid model. You can see if you activate it that you have the possibility to use a fixed height correction or that you can use a model. There are already uh, predefined models, uh, geoid models. You can see here are three Australian one, then you have Canadian one, and then you can find also this um, EGG97 underscore Europe, which I would use now um, for our current project. If you have no information about a geoid, but you know what is 
about your geoid undulation. So then you can also enter here a fixed height correction. So I would say for us here in Germany it would be about 40 meter. But uh, I would prefer to have the information of the geoid. This is now something to avoid a height shift if you have no other information. So now we have adapted the geoid model and the um, result will be then if you have imported your GNSS data with the ellipsoidal height you will find later on in your project the orthometric height. Okay we can say okay and now we can use this datum and use it in a projected system. So we go to our projected system and here we will select from WGS 84 31 North. We can find here at the bottom WGS 84 31 North projected coordinate system and when we take a look at the original one, again here with the APS-G code 32631, then we see here that uh, the sphere read at the moment is the standardized WGS84 and not our underscore user-defined sphere read. And of course, this is not uh, what we want. We want now again to make a copy. We cannot change the original one. So we select here copy and then we will now in the copy here um, apply our new datum and this is very simple we can here use from the based on we can here select now the underscore um, user defined WGS84 system and this will now um, assign our new datum the projection parameters we do not touch. We don't want to change this here. So we keep here the default settings. And just to find this one easier again, we give here a name and you can then of course call it whatever you want. Um, but you need to remember so you can find it again. We say okay. And now we defined our new projected system our user-defined WGS84 31 North zone system. Let's take a final look at the parameters we selected here. We can choose here on the right side the parameters. And now we can see here the different changes. So now we have here our user-defined WGS84 uh, uh, datum. We have our GeoEat that is applied from the European system here. We do not change the seven transformation parameters. So they stay in the old mode in this case here. And we can now run our demo data with this projected coordinate system. Just again to repeat here with the slide also we are now applying the geoid so that we can transform or move our ellipsoidal heights from the GNSS to the orthometric height and therefore to have all our data, also our ground control points, they are already in orthometric height so they fit now together with the GNSS height and uh, so we don't need to apply shifts or any other things in our processing later on. We hope this helps you to understand the project setup uh, and also to understand why do you need a GeoEat and also how you can change existing datums and existing projected coordinate systems so that you can run projects in your specific coordinate system that you need. Activate your new system by selecting OK now you will see here in your basics dialog the selected coordinate system and now your project is prepared that you can follow here with the reading of your images 